Man, I'm still trying to take all that in. So guys, I just saw Rogue One. And let me just say it was amazing. It was everything that I expected, everything that I wanted. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and so I have to talk about it. Now, this will be spoiler-filled because I can't, can't keep my mouth shut. I gotta say something. This is going to be a discussion about why I liked it, what I liked about it, and really some things that I didn't like about it. Every movie has its flaws, and so this was not a perfect movie, but it was definitely great. So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to just... Click off this video if you have not seen it. If you have not seen the movie, please don't watch this. I will say it one more time. If you have not seen the movie, don't watch this. Okay, five seconds until I go ahead and start talking about it. Okay, guys. So this movie has just blown my mind in, in a lot of ways. Mostly with the technical aspects of the movie, which I'll get to that in just a minute. First of all, how good was Felicity Jones in this one? She totally sold me that she was Jen Erso. I completely forgot I was watching Felicity Jones acting. Same thing with Diego Luna, who played Cassie and Andor. That guy was great too. It was another one of those things where I completely forgot that I was watching Diego Luna play a role. I was totally sold on the fact that this was Cassie and Andor. Can't say the same about Donnie Yen playing Shirat Emwe. Every time he came on screen, I was like, yep, that's Donnie Yen. But that's just because he himself is so iconic. It's hard not to look at his character and say, yeah, you were in Ip Man. Ip Man is playing in Star Wars. Do you need anything else to make this movie sound exciting? I love how they set up the backstory to Jen's character as well. I'm currently reading the Star Wars book Catalyst, which describes everything leading up to Rogue One, basically detailing Galen Erso's falling into the Empire's trap. Sorry, if you hear me mess up every now and then, it's because I love lifesavers. But I love how they set up Jen's backstory. It really gives you the perspective and the reason as to why she's not really on either side. She doesn't really know who to trust. It's because her father worked for the Empire when it was still known as the Republic. So, you know, obviously when he's finding all these kyber crystals, obviously they're going to come after him and say, hey, can you build us something that can blow up a planet? But I also have to touch on the opening scene as well. It does not start off with a crawl. This was something that people were expecting. I was open to the idea of one, but... And they didn't use a crawl. They didn't even do anything remotely similar to the Star Wars episode movies, which is great. I mean, it started off with a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but then it just cuts to the planet that they're on, where the backstory is taking place. And then after the entire backstory is set up, then here comes the title, but no traditional Star Wars music. It's the new Rogue One theme. I liked how they did it. I really do. I think that that was a cool way to realize that this is not part of the Star Wars saga. It is a story of the Star Wars saga. Really, really cool how they did it. But guys, the technical aspects of this movie is what I love the most. Aside from the acting, which was phenomenal by all characters, and aside from the fight scenes, which I'll get to in a minute, but aside from that, the technicality of this movie was incredible. Like when they showed the Death Star in comparison to the Star Destroyers, yeah, it's no wonder that in the original movie they said that it was a small moon. That thing's daggone big! In the scene where they're on Jedha and the thing eclipses the sun, that really does show how big it really is. So it just, it blows my mind. The director did a really good job of showing the scale of each of the things in this movie. Technology has definitely come a long way from back in the 70s and 80s when the original films were made. But guys, Here's where it gets super trippy for me. The actors that play Tarkin, Princess Leia, Red Leader, Gold Leader, Wedge Antilles, all of the characters that you will see in episode four, it blows my mind. They look exactly the same. I think that they used like animation and rendering and stuff like that to make it all look the same. It was incredible. I was sitting there, I was going, I swear that that is the original Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh, and yeah, I probably should mention that Princess Leia shows up at the very end of the movie, and she has one word. I won't say the word, but she has one word. But guys, that was super cool. That was my favorite technical thing of the entire movie, is that how, how they got the actors to look exactly like the original cast members. Now, let me talk about the fight sequences in this movie. The fight sequences were set up by the fans to be like a Saving Private Ryan meets Black Hawk Down in space. And I'll be honest with you, it does feel that way at the end. When they're on Scarif and they are facing the Imperials on their base on Scarif, that's when it really feels like a Black Hawk Down, 
you know, Saving Private Ryan, Vietnam War-esque movie, and it was awesome. It felt great. It was desperate. It was last resort feeling. It was, you didn't feel the hope that they were feeling because you see everybody getting wasted. <laughs> and it really does do a good job at setting up why they're so frantic at the beginning of episode four. Because at the end, you know, Vader whips out his lightsaber and kills, I don't, I think like 13 or 14 rebel people. But yeah, it really did start feeling like Black Hawk Down and Saving Private Ryan there at the end. Up until then, I was kind of feeling the same Star Wars battle type feel, but nevertheless, all the fight sequences and battle sequences were really cool, very well shot. I was impressed. I was especially impressed with how they did the space scene over Scarif, where they had to open up the shield gates so that they could get through to go into the planet and stuff like that. That was a really cool scene, especially when the hammerhead ship crashed into the downed Star Destroyer and it pushed it into another Star Destroyer and it blew up the gate. And let me talk about how they get the Death Star plans because this is when stuff really starts hitting the fan. Cassian, Jen, and K2SO all disguise themselves as Imperial people and go into the base at Scarif to get the data plans for the Death Star. And I thought it was a good excuse and a good way to get the plans. They're in this very tall, very vast database system. And you have to use this little remote control, you know, claw basically to get these things out. And it brings it to you on this, you know, wherever you are on this little platform thing. But of course, the Imperials find out that they're there, and K2SO fends them off enough to tell them that they need to climb to get to it because the system breaks down once the Imperials find out where they are because they shut the base down. And K2SO holds on just long enough to tell them that they need to climb to get it, and then he's killed. So Jen and Cassian are climbing to get the Death Star plans. Jen gets the Death Star plans, but Cassian gets shot, and you think he's dead, but he's really not. She's uploading the Death Star plans to the Rebellion through this satellite that's on Scarif. And Krennic, of course, finds her. He tries to shoot her, but guess what? Cassian comes in and shoots him in the shoulder, making him go to the ground unconscious. And Jen almost shot him first, I think. I think Jen should have shot him. I don't know. To me, it would have been cool to see another gunslinger moment, similar to Greedo and Han Solo in Episode 4. Eh, that's just me. The Cassian is not dead. They upload the plans, and she drags him to this beach. And guess what? The Death Star has been activated, and it is shooting at the base on Scarif. And guess what? They're caught in the crossfire, and they die. Yeah, I think it's safe to good, just go ahead and say that everybody who is a main character in this movie dies. But, you know, really, that makes more sense than trying to explain them off as to why they weren't in episode four in the first place. So, you know, I'm not upset with it. It's sad to see because I would like to see more of these characters, but, you know, it's just not what's supposed to happen. They're supposed to sacrifice themselves in the name of the Rebellion. So I'm okay with it. I was really hoping Donnie Yen would get out of there alive. And his friend Baze Malthus. But yeah, guys, literally at the end of the movie, it sets up right into the first scenes of episode four. And it is perfect. It is flawless. It is like it all happened in one day. I could not have been happier with this movie from start to finish. Really, the only downside of the movie was some of the character designs I felt were a little bit prequel-ish. Also, some of the dialogue I thought was a little cheesy in certain situations, but, you know, it's not to where you're cringing when you hear them speak, you know. it's it's It goes with the movie, but it's like, eh, they could have said something a little bit more cooler. But all in all, guys, this movie was fantastic. I'm not going to give you guys a rating for the movie. I'm going to let you guys go and see it for yourselves, if you have not already. And yeah, um, I just kind of wanted to sit here and talk about why I like this movie so much. It was so, it was great. It was so good. You guys need to go and see it. I want to go see it again, just so I can see if there was anything that I may have missed. Oh, and I should also mention, there are references in this movie, like... The dude that gets his arm chopped off at the bar in episode four, he's there along with his friend. There's blue milk at the beginning of the movie in the Urso house. There's a lot of references in here, and so, you know, that's pretty cool to see. But yeah, I need to go back and see it again just to make sure that I did not miss all of the references. So guys, if you like me just sitting here and talking about why I like this movie, then like the video. Post a comment in the comment section down below of what you thought the movie was and give me your rating for it. Go follow me on my social media accounts. The names are up here and the links are in the description boxes down below boxes. There's only one box, Logan. 
Come on, man. If you, you, need, you don't need to be making videos if you're just gonna mess up like that. Don't. Just stop. If you want to see the last video that I made, the annotation is over here, and the link for that is in the description box below. And guys, please do share this video and subscribe to me if you guys are new. I'll see you all in the next one.